You're listening to The Gap Podcast with your host, me, Morgan McGill. As we talk God and politics, my prayer is that you're inspired and encouraged to be a part of filling the God-sized gap in the political sphere. Enjoy the show. Welcome back to The Gap. I'm your host, Morgan McGill, and with me today is an elected member of his community planning group and a fellow Christian, Robert Rutledge, and I'm very excited to have him here today. Good afternoon. Thank you for being with me. Yeah. Um, I want to jump right into it. What got you into the political sphere? What is the genesis of your political involvement? Short answer is I was looking for some opportunity to um, engage and better my community. Um, I have a longer answer if you're interested. Oh, that's what the podcast <laughs> form is for. <laughs> um, I worked second shift at work for five years. Um, so my evenings were tied up, which just constrained normal life. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got a family. We've got three young kids. We go to church. We have home group. Um, and I missed out on a majority of that for the better part of five years. Um, in 2019, it would have been. I was able to change my schedule and then eventually my job to accommodate more normal hours. Mm -hmm. Um, And when that was happening, I kind of identified three priorities um, that I wanted to allocate my time to Mm -hmm. um, in order. Those were catching up with my family um, in engaging and getting involved in a ministry Mm -hmm. and then doing something to get back to my community. That last one was very vague. I didn't know what that looked like, but it didn't matter because that was like way down at the bottom. (laughs) Um, So that first year I spent going on dates nonstop with my kids. Um, I've got three kids. They are 10, 8, and 6 as of today. Um, So each Friday, a different kid would get a date after I got off work. And then the fourth Friday, I would just try and not fall right asleep. (laughs) Um, We did that for a year and it was hugely beneficial. I got to know my kids so much better. Um, They were fed, their confidence grew. Um, Just our, our I mean, we already loved each other. We're a happy family, but it got deep in a way that we didn't have. Yeah, It was super cool. That's amazing. If more parents should do that. Yes, I totally agree. (laughs) Anyways, (laughs) get me sidetracked on fatherlessness. No. Um, The second thing was ministry. Um, And so after that first year I spent with my kids, I told them I need to shift some of this time. Um, And I decided to spend my my time in, um, it's called Youth Venture. It's a um, after school Bible-based program for at-risk youth. Mm -hmm. Um, Foothills Church puts them on. There are four of them in East County, um, two in El Cajon, one in Santee, and one in Lakeside where I live. So I volunteered there one night a week for the last three years, um, and it was awesome. Um, It was equally disheartening to see just the brokenness and lack of hope um, at like our youth level. Mm -hmm. You see it a lot with adults, but it's like, you know, with an adult, you've been beat down for decades, right? I can understand it a little bit more, but with kids, you're talking like, ages eight to 17. And to see that degree and depth of hopelessness, Mm -hmm. it's like, we have to do something. Yeah. Um, Without that, this next generation, I'm afraid of what that looks like, not just for them, but my kids, my nephews and nieces, my neighbor's kids, right? All of our communities. Um, So that was a huge eye opener um, and opportunity, right? So these kids come in, um, it's a place to stay out of trouble, get off the street. There's snacks, there's games, um, but there's also lessons that are built uh, around the Bible. Um, And so, you know, these kids are incentivized with snacks, treats, um, time, you know, privilege time. Um, And, you know, at first it's a little, it's it's something new, it's different. Mm -hmm. So there's some reluctance by the third or fourth time. I'm walking in the door and there's three kids like, Robert, can we do a lesson? Um, So, There, you know, we talked about the the hopelessness, but there's also a desire for something to fill that void, right? Um, And so that was a huge way to see that we as a community and as a church can step in and do that. I love that. Yeah, it was incredible. 
Um, and that, so that was what I viewed as like my ministry gap that I was looking to fill, but it kind of tied into the community part as well. Yeah. Um, but I knew that I didn't want that to be it. Yeah. Um, so I remember talking with my pastor, um, who I mentor with and just telling him, this is what I'm looking for. Do you have any ideas? Um, and he was like, Oh, you know, you could coach soccer. You could do like these random little one-off things. And it was like, I, none of it was clicking Yeah, really kind of resonated. And I remember asking him, what about politics? And his ears perked up. Mm -hmm. Um, the church that we go to is very civically engaged. Yeah. We need more churches. <laughs> Like yes, <laughs> um, that is a role that I think is safe to say most churches have shied from yeah. um, for a long time. And it's pretty evident where it's got us. Yeah. It hasn't worked. Yeah. Um, so I really admire um, the work and effort that the pastors at, at the church I get to go to have put in, um, in spite of, you know, pushback and mm -hmm. even, you know, other churches maybe saying, you know, that's good for you, but we're not going to go along with it. They're willing to stand up there alone. Um, mm -hmm. And I really admire that. So that was something that, you know, as a Christian with no political background, experience, endeavors, anything, seeing like, hey, these guys are leading by example. There's a need for it. And in like certain ways, you know, it's California. So we're not going to move the needle zero to 100 necessarily yeah. but you can see on local levels um it start to move incrementally yeah right? 100%. um from the work and effort and time and persistence and prayer yeah um of the few that are willing to do it yeah so that's what caught my attention um he directed me to a couple people who were already involved um whether it be at you know the city council level school board levels etc um and just kind of sharing my thoughts and uh, background and willingness with them. Um, and eventually that is what led me towards filing and running uh, for uh, November 22's election. Yeah. It's funny, my mom and I were talking earlier today about how the majority of like jobs and positions and things that you get in just in life come from who you know. Mm -hmm. Like it's not what you know, it's who you know. Oh, for sure. And you learn what you know through who you know. Yep. <laughs> and it's uh, it's awesome that you went to your pastors and were like, hey, I know you're engaged and I'm thinking about this and they connected you. And then, and then like it was just that step and people get overwhelmed. They're like, well, I don't know what to start. I don't know. Right. I don't know enough. I don't know like, like who am I? Like, I don't know these things. Well, most of us, none of us knew these things until we Correct. stepped into it and we got around the right people. So I love that you are like, I don't know, but I know someone who knows and I'm going to reach out to that person and they're going to connect me. So once you got connected to those people and those local leaders, how did you take that step to yourself running for office? Um, I just want to go back real quick to a point you were making about... Um, seeking out someone you know. Yeah. I was actually thinking about it on the way over here. And I thought about that same, I guess, personal discouragement of, I don't know where to start. Yeah. And I guarantee that everybody knows someone, even if it's a degree or two removed from yeah. your immediate circle. You know someone who knows There someone. is some yeah. connection, yeah. right? And if you express that willingness and that desire um, enough times, be persistent, mm -hmm. someone will come along and help you. Yeah. Right. There's no shortage of need. Um, so you put yourself out there and someone will take you up on it eventually. Exactly. Um, as far as how I, I guess, wound up running and being elected. Um, the short answer is a lot of questions. <laughs> uh, I'm an engineer by trade, so I'm very inquisitive um, and I like problems and solving problems and understanding what goes into that. Uh -huh. um, so I had a lot of questions. I was redirected a couple times. Uh -huh. um, but again, knowing like, hey, this is the direction that God has me in. Um, so, you know, whether it running up against a wall of frustration or things maybe not looking the way that I thought they might look, um, just persisting in obedience. Um, it, it, you can't go wrong. Yeah. You can't go wrong. 100%. Um, so I can tell you initially, my point of interest was school board. Um, just because, you know, I've got the three kids that I have. 
Um, I've got nine nieces and nephews that also live in Lakeside, um, yeah. five minutes from me. Um, the youth venture that I was volunteering at, you know, you've got dozens and dozens of just broken kids that are a product of a broken school system. That's a huge opportunity for Christians to come in and influence those fixes. Yeah, 100%. So that was my, what I guess triggered my interest. Um, however, I quickly learned that, you know, not everything you're interested in is an area of need. Um, and there are plenty of other areas of need that might not even be on your radar. Uh-huh. Um, so that is how, short answer, I wound up on the community planning group. Um, I told you I'm an engineer. I make engine parts. I know nothing about public and private land use other than uh, what's yours is yours. Um, and limited government is a good thing. And government interaction viewed through the lens of the Bible and through the United States Constitution are a good thing. Um, and so, like I said, I'm not a land expert. Yeah. But I can view things through those lenses. Um, and I think that um, that was a hard thing at first coming in like, oh, I'm I'm not just green. I know nothing here. Yeah. But then being reminded like, hey, you've got God, you've got his word and you've got some really smart guys from 250 years ago who laid out what all of this should look like. Um, and leaning into that makes things a lot easier. So good. And what have what has been um, your experience? Has it been what you thought it would be like, or has it been something completely different? Because most people listening have no idea what it's like to serve in, pu- in public office or yeah. at a local level like that. It's tough to say if it's what I thought it would look like, because I kind of didn't know <laughs> what it would look like. I just knew again, hey, there's a need here. Yeah. Um, and I'm pretty sure I can adequately fill this need. Mm-hmm. Um, it has looked different than I thought it would look early on. Um, and there's kind of been some good, bad, and indifferent mixed in there. Mm-hmm. Um, I've learned a lot and I still feel like I know, you know, a drop in the bucket of what there is to know. Um, and it's interesting, you know, the purview of the planning group is specific to land use. Um, which again, I no experience there, but um, there are things from my background and my experience that I was able to lend and bring to the table that you wouldn't even think about, right? Mm. So like looking at things um, from a qualitative perspective, um, you know, guidance notes, work instructions, mapping out how we, th- how we want things to look and then making sure we follow the steps that we've defined to get us there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, things that you wouldn't think would come into play. But when you're talking about something like a government, a governing body, um, it's big, it's bloated at times. Um, and so you need these like controls and checkpoints and people to help keep you on track. Mm-hmm. Um, so whereas I might be weaker in some areas, I'm stronger in areas and having a group that kind of brings all these different things to the table really does create a type of balance that I think is positive and effective in keeping things headed in the right direction. I agree with you. Friends, in over 15 years in the political sphere, I cannot tell you how many times I've seen amazing men and women forego running for office because they have no idea where to start. And on the other side of that, I can't tell you how many times I have seen amazing candidates fumble the ball so hard because they have no idea what they're doing when they decide to run for office. That is why I founded Revival Consulting. The heart of this company is to help God-fearing men and women get elected to local, state, and federal office because we see a country where the men and women in positions of political power and influence know and love God. If that's you, if you're considering running for office but you have no idea where to start, or you need help, go to itsrevival.com and fill out our consultation form because we want to help you. We need your voice now more than ever. If you have seen anything that's going on in the world today, you know that you were put on this planet for such a time as this, and we need you. So please don't hesitate. Go to itsrevival.com and fill out our consultation form today. 
What would you say to someone listening who is thinking, I might run for office one day, or I'm thinking about running for office one day, but um, has no idea where to start or has no idea anything about like local organizations like the planning group or the fire board or the water board, like things like that. that people don't actually think about mm -hmm. on a regular basis as a, being a political office, <laughs> yeah. but actually impacts your everyday life and your community. Yeah. Um, we talked earlier about just asking and putting yourself out there. I think that is a really good first step. Yeah. Um, if you are engaged in your, your church community at all, I would be willing to bet someone there knows somebody and that person knows where the needs are. Mm -hmm. um, I had someone already um, engaged in government break it down to me in a way that made a lot of sense. Um, I'm a big baseball fan, so sports analogies resonate real easily. Uh, I was saying, you know, we got to build our bench, right? So we have like the starting nine, the top dogs who have been in there for a long time. They know how it works. They know how to succeed, um, but they're not going to be there forever, mm -hmm. right? Like everyone's time comes, whether to move on or retire, whatever. Um, and having that bench built up of, um, you know, maybe experience in lower levels or less experience in general, but a willingness and desire and aptitude to learn and to improve and to grow and to broaden um, your experience, those people are eventually part of the starting nine. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the Bible talks about don't despise small beginnings. Um, I had to kind of figure that out a little bit, just being honest of, you know, I have this interest in school board, um, but again, that's not a need right now. So having to kind of check yourself a little bit, right? Like your ego can get in there mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and being willing to, uh, sticking with the sports analogy, be a team player, right? Mm -hmm. Of, hey, you know, I want to be the starting pitcher today, but we got the ace out there. I don't need that. I need you in the bullpen. I need you ready to go so that when the time comes, You've checked all the boxes. You've mm. put in your time. You've got the experience. You've learned. So good. You're ready to go. Yeah. Um, so be okay to start small. That was um, so a big thing that I had to learn, but I did, and it, it's beneficial. So good, because we see so often people think, I'm going to run for office, and they go straight for the big one. Mm -hmm. You know, the, straight for city council, straight for mayor, straight for governor even. Yes. It's funny to see how many people, like, when when we get the, the ballot uh, – how, yes. like how long <laughs> the list is and you're like these people are you really thought you like why are you running for yes. governor it's funny i had this conversation with my brother-in-law uh, a couple weeks ago and he had asked something along the lines of do you really think that lakeside community planning group is going to move the needle in the grand scheme of things i said realistically like on a day-to-day -day basis no probably not but i think there's a couple really important reasons why you know for my specific instance, planning group, but for really any, I'll just call it low level governing body, you need good, solid, conservative Christians in there. Mm -hmm. um, one, when the time does come that there's something big that is going to move the needle, you want the right people already in place. You don't want to be scrambling um, or trying to, you know, come up with some movement against the wrong people on mm -hmm. the group or the board or whatever it may be to try and, you know, move things the way that they ought to go. You want to have that in place so that you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Um, the other thing uh, I've kind of learned is uh, this isn't for everybody. Mm. There it's is a place. Not for the faint of heart. No, it is not. There's, and I don't want to be misconstrued. There's a place for everybody in this game. Hundred percent. Right. We've all got time, talent, and treasure, mm -hmm. um, and we can give at least some of those. Yeah. That doesn't necessarily look like holding office. A hundred percent. Right. You can campaign, you can walk, you can door knock, um, you can ballot harvest, you can donate. I mean, we could do a whole episode on just the things that people could do outside of running alone. 100%. Um, but that's like all my episodes, you know, everyone's involved in a different space. Yes, there's and, something so, for everybody. So just keep listening because you'll find someone who does what you want to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the lower level stuff, I think, is a pretty good proving ground. Yeah. Of let's get your feet wet. And see try if this it. is even for you. Yes. And you know what? If you if you misstep, make a mistake, 
Again, since we're not talking about something that is likely to move the needle drastically every day, it's okay. Yeah. And right? it's not in like the media every day. Like yes. it's not You're someone not in get there. You're going to get dragged. Yeah. There's not the, in yes. someone in there recording you <laughs> and posting your clips of, oh, you said this at your planning group meeting. Right. It's a good way to, to build your, honestly, it's a good way to build your track record too. Absolutely. Because what people don't realize at these like smaller meetings, there are people from the county and the like local governments that come to these meetings to see what's going on and other elected officials that come in sometimes and if they see if they see you and they start to build a rapport with you then they know and then when something comes up that they're like oh this is a per a school board opening comes up and mm-hmm. members of the school board have come to these meetings and have gotten to know you and an opening comes up they're like i know exactly who we should appoint yep robert is fantastic but but if you don't have that rapport or that that place that space to build your your track record for people to get to know you then it's kind of hard to say at the end of the day how would you do in the seat i don't know you know yep absolutely so um i'm really glad that you said that too when when you decided to run for office how did that look with your family because i know a lot of people Mm. Um, they think, oh, I'm going to run for office and they don't realize that like it is, um, a sacrifice of your time. How did that look in like working that in with your already busy schedule and your family? And how did you, uh, balance that in? Because I think a lot of people don't realize that it is, it's, it is another additional sacrifice of Mm -hmm. your time and energy. Yeah. So before I committed to it, um, I had to get buy-in to my fa- from my family. 100%. That was super important to me. Um, you know, think back. I had just spent the previous five years away from them, and then I'd been spending all this time and effort and energy trying mm-hmm. to get caught back up. The last thing I want to do is undo all of that and be back to square one at what I had defined as my top priority. Mm-hmm. Um, so first off, talking with my wife, letting her know, hey, this is what I'm thinking. Um, just spitball. Tell me what you're thinking, what you're feeling. I don't know what the commitment is. It's not going to be zero. I can promise you that, (laughs) you know, there's going to be some give on your part. So this is something that we're doing together. Even if I'm the one sitting at a meeting, you're the one at home with the kids, right? That's added work to your plate. Mm -hmm. So making sure that there was buy-in from both of our angles. Um, And then making sure my kids understood too, like this is time away from you guys. Um, But I'm still going to be around. We're still going to do dates. You are still a priority above this for me. Mm. Um, and so, you know, if it gets to a point where I'm having to choose, you guys are always number one. Mm. Um, and then getting them engaged and excited about it. Mm-hmm. So I remember when um, I got all my yard signs in and needed to go canvas lakeside, it was a family day, right? Load up the car with snacks and drinks. And then we're driving through lakeside streets that we've never seen, having the kids call out. That's a good spot. That's a good corner. No signs are there yet. And we're hopping out. The kids are taking turns trying to, you know, push the uh, the yard signs turn. in. Yeah. Fighting over. Yes. Yeah. I mean, they're kids. Let's be real. It's my turn to um, put in a sign. Yeah. We, uh, we made buttons and let them wear them to school. So they got to show off and be, you know, Aww. proud of their dad. And it was a family affair. Um, and it wasn't a lot of effort to make it like that. It was more intentionality than effort. Yeah. Um, we already hang out. We already drive around and do stuff together. Throwing some signs in the back and making a day out of it. It was just a different type of adventure. Yeah. Um, so it it was important to do that, but it wasn't a big change. It wasn't as big of a change as I thought it would be. That's good. Though you were prepared for like more. And, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And. You know, I think part of that is, um, one, my area of interest being school board. I think there is a greater requirement there. Yeah. Um, And so I was a little mentally prepared for that. So anything short of that is like, oh, this is time wise. This is a walk in the park. Right. Um, Subject matter may be different, but the time aspect of it is not a big deal. Yeah. it, I guarantee it will probably be less than what you think if you're talking local level government of any role. Yeah. Um, you're not 
you know, on a state or federal level where it's time consuming full-time job, I still work 50 hours a week. Um, I still spend time with friends. I coach my kids soccer team. Um, and I do this, um, and I'm busy, but busy is good. God didn't call us to sit around. God told us to work and to work hard, right? Yeah. Now you squeeze in a day of rest, right? That's a priority. But for the other six, you bust it. Yeah. Um, and that doesn't just mean you're 40 for a paycheck. There's a lot of work outside of that, that I believe, firmly believe God has called us to. Yeah. And I'm glad you brought up your 40 for a paycheck because what people also don't realize is these roles are volunteer. Oh, yeah. And um, I've actually heard people in the past be like, well, you don't get paid for that? No, you don't get paid. At the local level, these small off- smaller offices, yeah. you're in an advisory role and you are volunteering your time. You are literally a public servant at that point. <laughs> like, it's like you don't get paid to volunteer at church. Yep. You don't get paid to volunteer for your community in this space. So how um, how would you, like, what would you say to people listening who are like, oh, I don't know if I could do that. I mean, it's time and my time is money and I don't want to, like, I don't want to do something that I can't, like, I'm not even going to get paid for and I have to listen to people talk about road signs and sewage and... <laughs> Putting Um, in a Popeye's. (laughs) (laughs) A couple things. One, I would push back that you don't have time. I would challenge anyone who says that to get out your calendar and tell me you can't find two hours a month. So I can tell you for the planning group that the mandatory time commitment is one meeting a month uh, for I think the max time is two and a half hours um, on a Wednesday evening. If you can't find two and a half hours in your month in all honesty to your heart. Okay. Fair enough. Um, but I don't know a single person in my life who can't find that. Um, and I know some really busy people. (laughs) (laughs) Um, as far as the, the compensation aspect of it, um, you know, there is, there is so much need. Um, and what's at stake with those needs, Mm -hmm goes well beyond a couple bucks. Like I can tell you school board that I was interested in. I think that one actually does get paid and it's like a whopping $200 a month. Mm -hmm. Um, You could take away that money. I know all five sitting board members and they would still be on that board. Um, They are not doing it for the pay. They're doing it because they understand the stakes. Mm -hmm. Um, And even more so as a Christian, um, if you've got your pulse on civics um, you know, whether it be local, state, federal, or global in any way at all, um, I think you've got a pretty good understanding of the stakes. So, um, you know, I understand it's easy, it's natural to think about um, the dollar amount attached to your time. Mm-hmm. Things are expensive. They're inflated. It's difficult. Especially in California. <laughs> it is so hard. But... Um, you know, what we're doing, the work that we're putting in, um, even if it's indirect and tangential to the gospel, um, it's still what we're called to do. You know, if we're meant to be um, good stewards of what God has given us, mm-hmm. and God has given us the privilege of living in the greatest country in the history of the world, um, then it's our job, paid or unpaid, to be good stewards of that. I love that. So before we go, I wanted to open up the floor to anything that you would say to Christians listening who maybe aren't civically engaged Mm. at all. Um, Maybe they vote, but they don't vote in every election. They only vote presidential. Or maybe they do vote in every election, but that's kind of it. That's all they do. What would you say to Christians listening about getting engaged? Um, first thing, this is like a mandatory, non-negotiable, you have to vote. Um, and especially for state and local level stuff. Um, I can tell you personally, I've fallen into that trap of my vote doesn't matter in my past. Um, and it's a lie. It's a lie from the enemy. Um, don't buy it. Your vote matters, especially on the state and local level. Those are the things that are going to impact you 
your kids, your neighbors, mm-hmm. your church community and family mm-hmm. um, on a day-to-day basis. So that's a non-negotiable. Yeah, some of those are determined it's by like huge. two votes. Yes. Yeah. So that's that's my non-negotiable number one. Um, number two, this is, I'll just say a strong encouragement. Um, get out of your comfort zone. So if you're voting and you're doing the bare minimum, that's good, gold star for you. Mm-hmm. But you don't get to just rest on your laurels of like, oh, I'm doing the right thing and someone else will take care of that. Um, you know, we talked about there is no shortage of need. You don't know what needs there are until you step out with a willingness to fill them. Mm. Um, and set your ego aside. There's nothing that's too grimy or, you know, not glamorous enough or beneath you. If there is a need, fill it. And you know what? You step out obediently, God will bless you for that. Yeah. You might not see it today. You might not see it in the form of pay, but God will bless you for that. He promises that. And we can we can hold on to that tight. And the more you step out, the more you show a willingness and an ability to fill those needs, the more opportunity you'll have to do the same in greater and greater ways. Um, and it will become contagious. People see it. 100%. People notice it. And again, it's contagious. You know, I want to do what he's doing or what she's doing. Yeah. You know, someone watching this, I want to, I want to do a podcast. I want to get people talking about this. I want to get this on people's minds in between election years, right? When we can set up the groundwork for a successful election. Yep. We don't want to wait till the 11th hour. If you know it's coming, let's work now. Yeah. Right. Um, so just being open, um, being engaged, even outside of your comfort zone, um, just get to work. Yeah. There's work to be done. And that's what we're here for. Yeah. And we're in an election year now. Yep. So get active. There's a probably time a, is short. <laughs> there's probably a lot of uh, holes in your local communities yes. that can be filled in 2024. More than you'd imagine. Yeah. A lot more. Yeah. There's some others. What people don't realize is there are a lot of seats where there are just walk on seats mm-hmm. because not enough people sign up to fill those holes yep. that you just can walk right on to the year after year after year it's the same thing and then a lot of and a lot of t- the times they don't have enough people running for some of these seats that they have to appoint random people mm-hmm. so if seriously. we're going to have those filled who better than conservative christians to do so amen Thank you so much for being on with me today, Robert. Yeah, it was a blast. Thank you. I love this conversation, and I just can't wait to see what God does through you next. And for that time that you end up on the school board, I'll be cheering for you. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Thanks for listening to today's episode. If you liked what you heard, don't forget to share it, and make sure you subscribe to our channel so you don't miss an episode. Now go out in the world and make disciples. We'll catch you in the next one.